this is my test piece. I always do a little uh, square steel just to check for full hardness. There's a magnet down there. Don't know if you can see it in the in the shadows. There's a magnet down there. I just checked it on to make sure I was uh, non-magnetic, and I always heat the steel to the uh, the low end of the critical range. So that piece will be left to go cold and then tested for full hardness later. I just lift the, uh, the handle out and the handle's still smoking. It needs to stay in the oil a bit longer. Still smoking. The oil's been preheated to around about 50 55 degrees centigrade. No smoke now. And then they're all wrapped and kept nice and warm on my insulated mat, which is down here. It doesn't do any harm. To actually try and do a, a scrap, ah, it's still a bit hot. To actually do a, a scratch test using a sharp, hardened piece of uh, a drill or something like that, or a file. And in this case, it's just uh, it's just skating. So I know that's a, a quick check for anyone that hasn't done it before, how you can just check to see if your steel has been hardened. Whilst they're still warm, get them in the tempering oven, which has been preheated. And you want a minimum a minimum of two hours in there for the first temper. Well, we're at the Rockwell tester now, and I'm going to test my piece of hardened steel, the piece, the small piece of scrap that I uh, just quenched. This hasn't been tempered. This has just been uh, quenched. Just make sure I'm on the on the money. There, yeah, I'm bang on there. So I'll unload the test force now. And there's about 150 kilograms now being applied through the diamond indenter into the test piece. Just leave it for a while to settle. Well, that's settled long enough, the needle's no longer moving. So now it's time to unload the force and get the, uh, the rock well reading. And that's uh, 65 HRC, which is pretty much about as good as it gets for a one tool steel. Now we know the uh, the hardened piece of steel was at 60, 65 HRC. Now I've got a, a tempered 
gone through the first temper cycle. The blade that I uh, quenched earlier, and we'll see uh, what he reads. I always take my readings along where the cutting edge is going to be as well. Let's have a look at that then. So uh, I'll bring you in for the critical moment. I'm just going to unload it and we'll see where it's at. There we are. That's looking good. And as you can see, a bit too close. Fifty eight point seven, fifty eight point six, fifty eight point seven. Just tap it. Almost fifty nine. So uh, happy with that. Something else that you can do with a test piece as well. This is what I do with my test piece after every heat treat. Because it's only a piece of scrap steel that I have left over anyway. Uh, stick it in the uh, in the vise. Clamp it nice and firm. You should wear safety glasses. And then it snaps just like that. Well, I've clamped the two pieces that I snapped into the vise. And uh, hopefully we can get a nice good view at them through this magnifier. So you should be able to see there's no visible granular sort of grain. It's completely smooth. And that's what you're looking for. If you can see grain then you've got a poor heat treat. So if you've got a nice grey like that, then your heat treat's good. So these are all tips that the hobbyist home knife maker can do with very little equipment really. <laughs>